Remember Allah. If you were really remembering Allah all the time, you wouldn't have time to be obsessed with your ego. You'd be obsessed with Allah and His magnificent power and creation. You'd be humbled by it all the time. So the first solution to a person with a pure mind is they remember Allah. And then anything that takes them away from remembering Allah, they see, they see that as an enemy. So it's, you know, if your friends take you away from remembering Allah, if it's your laptop that takes you away from remembering Allah, if it's your iPhone that takes you away from, I have an iPhone, it's okay. But it's a, right? iPod, fine. iPod Touch that takes you away from remembering Allah. If it's your PS3, if it's Grand Theft Auto 57, whatever. Right? If that takes you away from remembering Allah, then that's what's turning you into an animal. And actually more like a zombie when you're playing this video game, right? Allah describes the, the heedless as cattle. They're like cattle, they're even worse. Look at a kid playing video games. Don't tell me they don't look like cattle. <coughs> That's all they're doing. And Allah compares them to cattle because cattle has no idea what's going on around it. You know that? A cow has no idea what's up. A car could pass by on the highway, won't even look up. Now watch somebody who's playing video games. There could be a fire in the house. <laughs> <laughs> That's all that's going on. They're turned into cattle, even worse. Even worse. Even worse, because the cattle, at least it's naturally that way. You were you were given reflexes. You were made aware. You became worse than subhanAllah. SubhanAllah. So I, mean, the, the, I don't want to give you a, a, a complicated academic lecture. I just wanted to bring forth concerns that I see are the primary concerns uh, uh, for youth, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, I just wanted to share with you a heart to heart. I don't claim that I'm above these problems. I probably had similar or worse problems when I was your age, but nobody was there to tell me. Nobody was there to say, man, you, you're messed up. You need to become human. Stop being an animal. Really. When you, you use a lot of cuss language, don't think you're all hardcore because you can curse. I can curse better than you. But the fact that I hold myself back, you know what that means? I'm more human than you are. That's what that means. And you're less, because you can't control what? You can't control your tongue. So may Allah Azza wa Jalla make all of you decent human beings. May Allah Azza wa Jalla help you protect your humanity and make you good to your families and obedient to your parents. May Allah Azza wa Jalla make you people who actually care and don't take an apathetic, egotistical approach to everything in life. May Allah Azza wa Jalla make you identify your real priorities in life, especially when it comes to avoiding all forms of shamelessness. And secondly, taking care of your parents and, and, and being respectful to them. So I'd like to share with you exactly what I'm saying. Do we have a Q&A session? Do we have a Q&A session? No, right? No can questions, I, right? Can I voluntarily uh, initiate my <laughs> Is that a question or a comment? <laughs> okay, go ahead. Well, I was just wondering because I thought it's important, or, or maybe you could advise us, um, how can we deal with those instances when we see individuals who are full of this, like you said, you know, useless knowledge? Like, for instance, you have a movie star, but they're, they're going and adopt, adopting people from Africa, and you have like a football player probably getting into a lot of charity, or you're listening to music, and you know, you, there are instances. Yeah, really what I'm trying to say is that a lot of times, what really deviates us is this mix between the good and bad. How you find the good yeah. and bad in both in one place, and that starts blurring in our mind. That, that, that fine yeah. line that Allah SWT draws between rights. Yeah, it's actually very, I'm really happy you asked that question. I gave a about that yesterday. Uh, the Quran says something really peculiar. Really peculiar. You have to pay real attention if you want to understand this, okay? A number of times in the Quran you find the phrase, وَزَيَّنَ لَهُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ وَأَعْمَلَهُمْ Shaitan unified their deeds to them. The word amal in Arabic doesn't just mean deeds, it usually implies good deeds. It doesn't imply deeds, mostly it implies good deeds. If the evil deeds are mentioned in specific, we find the words su'u amali, the worst of their deeds, or evil forms of deeds. So Allah is saying, Shaitan, beautify to them their good deeds in a sense. What in the world does that mean? Good deeds are beautiful anyway, so Shaitan is doing a good thing. I mean, I would find it bad if Shaitan made them beautify what? Bad deeds. But Allah says, no, Shaitan made them beautify good deeds. Why would he say that? You see, there are people who do really, really horrible things. Really horrendous things. And then they do something what? Good. And then shaitan makes them say, man, you're so good. You do this one good thing. You're such an awesome person. People should be just like you. And they make them, that one good thing makes them forget what? The really bad thing that they just did. Right? So what shaitan does is, he makes you worry about that one good thing and highlight that. 
And that's supposed to compensate for all the, by, by the way, Fir'aun tried this. Musa Ali Islam came to Fir'aun, you know, let Bani Islam go. Fir'aun says to him, Didn't we raise you as a child? Didn't you spend many years with us? Is that a good deed or no? It's a good deed. You know how Musa responded? Yeah, you did do that a real big favor to me. Does that mean you get to enslave Bani Israel? So you did that really good thing. Thanks, you babysat me for so many years. I guess that lets you become a slave owner for an entire nation. How are you comparing these two things? One doesn't cancel the other out. This isn't, you know, this isn't uh, 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 positive and negative in a video game. You lose points for doing this, you, you, know, you gain points for doing that. This one doesn't erase the other necessarily. No. You know, and so we have to understand when somebody does something evil, or they're associated with something evil, we call it that. Not, and not, people don't only do bad things and people don't only do good things. People do a mix of all of those things, right? And it's okay to appreciate a good athlete. There's nothing wrong with that. But thinking that these are the people to look, for, look up to, what do they look up to? What's their goal in life? Once this guy loses his knee in, a, in an accident in a ba basketball game, you still get his be your hero? All that, what did you look up to? How high can jump? That's it? That's, you know, so you're, a, you're, you're basically only looking at things that are less than, I come back to the same point, less than human, less than decent. You know, there, these are, anybody can do that. But look up to someone who makes you a, an awesome person. Which is why, I didn't say this advice before, but I'll say it now, I'm ranking now, but find older people to be friends with. It's good to have older friends. They're more mature than you, they're smarter than you, they can tell you when you're acting stupid. Uh, friends your age make you dumber. Seriously, friends older than you make you smarter. Yes? I'm just looking at uh, the thing that you said, uh, that the shaitan will make us uh, the one good thing and highlight it. And with this thing, would, would the shaitan make us arrogant with this one? And yeah. And forgetting that... Okay, arrogant and happy with it. That's the lesson maybe it's... Uh, which is the uh, takes uh, the shaitan away from Jannah. Yeah. That's the yeah. first step. So, uh, yeah. Wait, nobody else has a question, right? And Jehovah is waiting now. Yeah. I made him listen to me. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. all right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, I just kind of want to advise, like, okay, so many of us, like, we have this, our highest, like, our Quranic, going back to Quran, our, our like, the highest educational Quran, like, many of us go to life with only like, third grade understanding of the Quran, where we either stop studying it or we don't go anywhere past that, just reading it once, or just like, you know, memorizing just a few things from the back of Jizoma. And like, what, what, what is something that we can do to like continue it? And also, like, what, what would you set, like, you know, like by, for example, I, I, not that we should set, like, limits or anything like that, or boundaries or, like, stages, but in a way, what would you say, like, okay, by so age 10, you should know. By age 10, by age 15, you should like be at this point. Well, so for some of you, those ships have sailed, right? So might as well just identify milestones instead of age milestones. Because um, none of your or very few of your parents here. So, but um, what I think is the advantage of the Muslim world is that you have scholars that have given really nice lectures on the entire Quran. I explain the Quran to people with proper tafsir in the language of the people. This is an advantage of the Muslim world. Uh, people have done this in, in the Arab world. Um, people have done this in the indo pakistan continent. Uh, this is only beginning to happen in English now. Where, you know, I don't think we are a people of reading as much as we are a people of what? Of listening. And when you listen to something, it sticks. When you read something, you forget. At least that's the case with me. So uh, I think uh, one of the things you guys have to do now, inshallah ta'ala, is to maybe in, uh, highly encourage your local imams to start a of uh, regular tafsir that are years in commitment, just once a week. And don't worry about quantity of Qur'an, worry about what? Quality of Qur'an. Just one passage that you can really, really, really well. You memorize it, you recite it properly, you use it in prayer, you've studied every single word of it, you know it's tafsir. Uh, you've heard lectures on it, you've asked really hard questions about it, you know so much about this one passage. That's a healthy relationship with the Qur'an. Uh, as opposed to having a shallow knowledge of the whole, you know, a, a lot of Qur'an. That's not as beneficial as having a lot of really good knowledge about a select passage from the Qur'an. Uh, this is 
one resource I can tell you about, it's not the only resource, and there are 